Hello. Um, today I'm going to record the knowledge I know about um, tube type amplifiers. Uh, this is a hobby of mine. I've been refurbishing amplifiers for about 10 years. So uh, some of my friends uh, and my brother want to start getting into tube type amplifiers. So I'm going to go ahead and make a video, a series of videos of this. Uh, the first video right here is just intro, then the next video I'm going to go over the Dynaco Mark III uh, schematic. After that I'm going to go over wire diagram, and then the last video I'm going to make is that I'm going to go over an example on how I refurbish the Dynaco Mark III. Um, the Dynaco Mark III, uh, also called Dynakit, uh, is a, a very uh good amplifier uh it's the poor man's macintosh that's what it's known of um let's see okay here we go uh so after you take off the cage of the uh amplifier you will see that there is this one transformer right here this is the audio output transformer this is where you get all the audio sound from. And then there's another transformer at the back right here. This transformer right here is uh, the power supply transformer. And then you'll see a circuit board right here. This circuit board has a lot of uh, uh, filter capacitors for audio purpose um, and feedback. Um, and it has a small tube right here. This small tube right here, this one is the 6AN8, basically this small tube, and I'll go over the details a little bit later, uh, gets the input signal of the audio, and then it uh, transfers this audio signal to these two big tubes right here. These two big tube amp uh, tubes right here, uh, audio tubes right here, they are the uh, 6550 uh, or the KT88. Um, both of these two then amplify the audio signal out to the transformer. Behind these two tubes, well, I don't think I have another photo of that. Well, behind these two tubes is a rectifying tube, and I'll go over that. Uh, you can kind of see the edge of it right here. The rectifying tube takes the uh, power that comes from the uh, power trans uh, power input of the transformer right here and rectifies it from AC voltage to DC voltage. Uh, the tube type amplifiers operate anywhere between 300 to 600 volts DC. Finally, this silver uh, can right here, this is actually a capacitor. It's a multi-section uh, capacitor. It has four different capacitance in it. Um, and that will, I'll go over that in the next video. So first, let's go over the GZ34 rectifying tube. Um, Right here is the spec sheet. The rectifying tube is, in my opinion, one of the most basic tube. Uh, it is very similar to a uh, diode. Um, I'll go over these uh, specs in a second, but let's go over to this page right here. As you can see, the rectifying tube has one, two, three, four, five pins. Um, what these pins are is there are two plate pins. Uh, these are actually the anode pin, so there's two anodes. It has one cathode that also shares the same pin with the filament. And the filament goes between 2 and 8. So let's look at the diagram over here. This is what happens. Uh, the cathode right here, when it's heated up, it will release electrons in this vacuum tube. And once it releases electrons, these electrons want to flow towards the anodes, the plates right here. Uh, because the anodes, the plates, are normally 
uh, positively charged. So these negative electrons want to flow towards the positively charged uh, uh, anodes right here, plates right here. So what happened is this, is that the filament right here between 8 and 2, if you give it uh, some voltage, doesn't matter if it's AC or DC, and usually they're between 5 to, I don't know, 12, 15 volts, very low voltage, uh, heats up, this filament heats up and it heats up the cathode, the gath cathode, then it will release electrons and goes towards these plates. So I said earlier that uh, under this setup, as you can hear, see that there's a cathode and an anode. Uh, this is very similar to a diode, and that's why it rectifies. You have two, basically two diodes uh, right here. So I did a search on rectifying circuits, um, and here is a good example of two diodes. Um, the back of the diode is the anode, and the front is the cathode. And as you can see, there's two of these. So if you put an AC signal on the anode, as you can see, it then filters, I mean, it then takes the AC signal and then it makes it into not quite a DC signal yet, but basically it's moving in that direction. Let me uh, type in tube full wave reference. Let's see if anything like that shows up. Okay, well, there's not much showing up right here, but basically it's the same idea. Tubes and diodes are very similar. Well, I mean, uh, rectifying tubes are very similar to two diodes, is what I really mean. So if you look at the spec sheets of the uh, GZ34, you can see that the filament right here, the heater voltage, it requires about 5 volts. Um, and you can see right here, this is uh, uh, the max input uh, voltage and then the output of it, DC output. So once again, usually these two plates, you apply the full uh, AC signal to it, and then on pin 8, you'll then have a close to DC signal coming out of it after it goes through a capacitor and a choke. And on the next video, I'll, sh I'll show more detail on this. So the next vacuum tube I would like to go over is the 6A and 8 vacuum tube. This one is the little small vacuum tube that was in the front of the picture. Now this vacuum tube basically has two components. It has a triode, as it says right here on the left hand side, and it has a pentode on the right hand side. Now if you look at all these pins right here, it's very similar to the rectifying circuit. First of all you have your filament right here, that's the arrow right down here that heats up the cathode. So let's look at the triode first. So it heats up the, cath the cathode right here. And then it also has a plate, the anode's up here, that goes to pin 1, and then the cathode goes to pin 3. Now it has something extra. On pin 2, it has a, this is called a control grid. Now this control grid uh, basically can control the flow of the electrons that flows from the cathode to the anode. The more negatively charged, if you apply a more negative voltage to the control grid, then less current wants to flow from the cathode to the anode. But if you give more positive charge or positive voltage to it, then more electrons wants to flow to the anode. Now with that idea in mind, now you can actually use a triode to actually amplify signals. So as you can see right here, 
this is a triode right here, um, a very simple setup where you have your voltage, uh, positive voltage on your plate and you have a negative voltage or ground on your cathode. And once you have an input signal right here, it then gets amplified out on the anode. So if you look at this, this is again very similar to a transistor circuit too. I mean, here's a transistor circuit. And as you can see, just like a transistor circuit, you have a small signal comes into the base and then on your collector right here you have your output signal that's amplified based on the voltage that you apply to the transistor circuit. So now let's look at the pentode. The pentode basically is just a more complicated version of the triode or you could also say it's a more improved version. Once again it has the cathode right here and has the anode right here and pin 8 is the control grid. Now it has one extra one, pin 7, right here. This is called the output screen. So once again, it's very similar to the triode, but the pentode under different uh, setups, for example, tying pin 7 to pin 6 or some other combination can uh, do unique amplification purposes and and has a, a better quality of of, uh, of audio from it. So um, let's see. Um, right here, you can see that once again, the heater voltage on the filament is also very low, six point three, but then. Uh, The voltage on the plate is in the 300 volts range. So once again, this is high voltage, so you have to be very careful when you mess with this. Finally, the beam power tube. This is basically uh, another pentode. The, uh, uh, the This is the two big tubes that's at the back of the picture that you saw earlier. And this is where most of the... Uh, uh, amplification happens is from this tube right here. So as you can see the pin diagram just like before uh, this is just uh, again the filament right here, cathode and anode and you can see that there's three screens right here um, most likely pin 4, no nope, pin 5, okay this pin 5 is the control grid and then pin 4 is the output screen. Uh, and as you can see right here, um, this operates normally under about 450 volts when you, if you want 7.5 amplification factor. And as you can see, the grid is negative uh, uh, 46 volts. And that's quite common because uh, Normally, the uh, uh, the the control uh, screen. I mean, the control grid uh, normally does have a like either negative or zero volts. Um, and as you increase it to more positive volts, then it lets more current flow through to the anode. Uh, but once again, the filament. As you can see, the here filament is always low voltage, 6.3. So that's pretty much it.